Lesson 32, expanded notation elapsed time. So expanded notation is actually uh, a pretty simple concept once you know what the words expanded notation means. Uh, and it's just applying place value to numbers within a number. Uh, that, that sounds a little strange, numbers within a number. Uh, numbers within place values of a number. Oh no, that's more wordy. Okay, let's just get into it. So your book is gonna ask you to do something like write the number 358 in expanded notation. Well, the only thing that expanded notation cares about is place value. So for example, this eight is in the ones place value, right? This five is in the tens place value, and this three is in the hundreds place value. So what expanded notation does is it separates this number based on place value, and there's a specific way to write it. So the way this works is we're gonna start all the way to the left of the number, so that means the three in the hundreds place. And what expanded notation does is it, it makes sure that you understand the value of each of these numbers within the number 358. For example, uh, the number three actually has a value of 300, right? If we were to take away the five and the eight, the number would be 300. So that's gonna be the first thing we write in expanded notation. Uh, and expanded notation is very precise. It's written inside of parentheses. So we take that number three, we would put it inside of parentheses, and we would say three times 100, right? To, to let us know that that three isn't only the number three, it's actually 300. Three times 100, 300. So we, we're pretty much rewriting each digit based on its place value. So the first digit, three, three times 100. Then we put a plus sign, right? This is very important. In between each place value, you have to put a plus sign, right? So three times 100 plus the next digit, which is five. So I'm gonna go ahead and put five, right? And then five is gonna be multiplied by its place value of tens. So I'm gonna put plus five times 10 because the five in this number actually has a value of 50, not just five. So 350. And then the last one is the ones place value. So we go ahead and we put our plus sign again. Then we put our eight and then eight times the place value of one, eight times one. And this is the number 358 in expanded notation. Exact same number, uh, different notation. Okay, so this would be our final answer for this problem. Whoops. So we'll do one more example and then we'll, we'll show uh, how it can change uh, a little bit, or how to go from expanded notation to uh, traditional notation. So let's take the number, uh, we'll, we'll do a big one, 1,760. Okay, so we've got 1,760, and if it helps you, you can go ahead and put the place values over your numbers so you don't make any careless mistakes. So thousands, hundreds, whoops, don't need a comma there, tens, and ones. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with my first number, the one, inside of parentheses, and we put one times its place value of 1,000. Then I'm going to add that to the next place value, seven times the value of 100 for 700, six times the value of 10, whoops, not 60, six times 10. And then what we notice here is the one's value has a zero. So any pl place value that you see that has a zero, you don't have to write it, you can just skip it. So this would be my final answer right here, all right? So one times 1,000 plus seven times 100 plus six times 10. 1,760, okay? Now let's go ahead and do the, op the opposite. Let's, uh, let's take something in expanded notation and we'll write it in uh, standard notation. So let's say we've got, let's switch colors for this. Let's say we've got uh, the number five times 1,000 plus two, whoops, two times 100 plus eight times one. Okay, so this is a number in expanded notation. We need to convert it to standard notation. So we're just gonna start writing our number from the left to the right, noting our place value. So we've got five times a thousand. So that's gonna be five and then comma, cause it's a thousand. Next we have two in the hundreds place. Okay, and then we have eight in the ones place. Anybody notice something missing here? There's no tens place. Now remember what I said on this one. If there is a zero in that place value, we don't write it in the expanded notation. So since 10 is missing, that means the, the number in the, in the tens place is obviously the number zero, because there is no 10 value. Then lastly, we do eight times one, which gives us a value of eight in the ones place. All right? And that would be the final answer in standard notation. Now let's talk about elapsed time. Elapsed time can be a little bit tricky for people. There's a, an algorithmic way of doing it, and then uh, there's another way of doing it, which um, I would say is slightly more logical. 
And uh, I, I like the other way, uh, which is actually not taught in your book, because this is the way that I actually use in real life if I have to actually solve one of these problems. So I'll show you the algorithm way, uh, which is good to make sure you have an accurate answer. And then I'll show you the more practical or what I'd like to call the logical way. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, I need to cover this answer with a sticky note. So that way I can show you this problem. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this problem right here, F, and I'm gonna adjust my focus because blurry letters are slightly perturbing. <clears throat> okay, it says the marathon started at 7.15 a.m. George finished the race at 11.05 a.m. How long did it take George to run the marathon? So, uh, if you notice, this, uh, this story problem pattern is a sum and sum more, but since we're dealing with time, we actually have to subtract the later, t or sorry, not sum and sum more. Uh, this is, a, well, oh, I forget the, the code that your book uses, but it's, a, it's time and then, uh, oh no, that's what it is. It's a later, earlier difference problem. That's what they call it, I forget. Okay, so we have an earlier, uh, earlier time and then we have a later time. So we're gonna take the later time, subtract the earlier time. So let's go ahead and do that on our paper. We've got the time of 11.05 a.m., all right, so it's in the morning, and then we're subtracting 7.15 a.m., also in the morning, okay? So with our algorithm, we'll go ahead and subtract here. Five minus five gives us zero. Uh, we have to regroup this one, bring it over. 10 minus one is equal to nine. Uh, and then from there, uh, we have to regroup this one, make that a 10. 10 minus 7 gives me uh, 3, right? So it took him 3 hours and 90 minutes, right? Ooh, that's where the algorithm gives us problems. So we know that there's no more than 60 minutes in an hour. So whenever our minute count ends up being uh, longer or larger than 60, what we have to do is we have to regroup this number to give us another hour. So what we do is we'll regroup 60 minutes out of this 90 into an hour. So if I take 60 minutes out, I'm left with 30 minutes, all right? And then I add one more hour to my three hours, which gives me four hours and 30 minutes. So my final answer would be four hours and 30 minutes, all right? Now, um, what I do logically in my brain whenever I have to solve these problems is I actually count upwards. So uh, this might seem, well, to be honest, this method takes more time on paper, but it actually takes less time in your head. Uh, so this is just an alternative method to solve the problem that you can see. So what I would do is I'd start out with the time 7.15 a.m. And then I would ask how, many, how much time do I need to get to the next hour so I can just add hours, right? I don't wanna have to add minutes because minutes are difficult. So how many minutes do I need to get to 8 a.m.? Because I'm going from 7.15 a.m. all the way to uh, 11.05 a.m. So I'm just gonna go up to the next hour. So in order to go from 7.15 to 8 a.m., I have to add 45 minutes. So 45 minutes, okay? And now I'm at 8 a.m. Now, whoops, forgot a zero, 8 a.m. Now, I would ask myself, how, many, uh, how much time do I need to go uh, from 8 a.m. to uh, 11.05 a.m. So from 8 to 11, that's three hours, right? So 8 to 11, three hours. So plus three hours, and I'm at 11 a.m. What, what, what's my, my computer's beeping at me, hold on. Okay, sorry, Windows is trying to tell me to update things. All right, and where was I? Eight to 11, three hours, yep. Okay, and then from there, from 11 to get to 5 a.m., I just have to add another five minutes. So then what I would do is I would add all these up together. So I've got uh, 45 minutes plus five minutes gives me 50 minutes, three hours and 50 minutes. Whoa, that's not the same thing we got up ahead. That means I made a mistake somewhere. Let's find out what this mistake was. Okay, so here I've got three hours, 50 minutes. Here I've got four hours, 30 minutes. One of these is wrong. I'm gonna take a guess and say this one's wrong because this is the method that I use the least. So let's double check and see what kind of errors Mr. Claiborne made. Uh, let's see here, subtracted, good. Oh, I didn't regroup. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and show you this algorithm again. I made a terrible, terrible er error. Uh, first here, when I subtracted the five from five and I saw that worked out, I said, great. And then I realized I couldn't subtract zero from 15. 
That did not work out. The thing I forgot uh, when we're doing subtraction algorithms using time is we have to look at these two numbers as a whole, right? So I can't just look at the ones, uh, the one minute value and then the 10 minute value separately the way I did with traditional algorithms. I'm actually glad I made this mistake so that way we can focus on it. Um, what I have to do is I have to look at these two numbers uh, together and I see that five is smaller than 15 so I cannot subtract anymore. So what I have to do, I'll go ahead and rewrite this over here. I've got 1105 minus 715. What I have to do is I have to regroup one of my hours. So I'm going to take this 11, turn it into 10 hours, and then I'm going to take those 60 minutes and I'm gonna add them to my five. So this is much more similar to fractions than it is to uh, traditional subtraction algorithms. Uh, so much like fractions where you have to look at the entire denominator, you have to look at the entire minute count here. So that one hour now turns into 60 minutes. So now I have 60 minutes plus five minutes, which makes this become 65 minutes. Now I can go ahead and subtract. So five minutes minus five minutes gives me zero. Six minutes minus one minutes, or 60 minus 10 gives me five or 50. From there, then I can go ahead and do 10 minus seven, which is three, and then I have three hours and 50 minutes. Okay, well, uh, thank you for bearing with me and my mistake. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and use this method, which is my preferred. It's the one that I actually use as an adult. Um, if you use this method, it does get you more practice on the algorithm, but um, just make sure you show your work whichever method that you choose. Okay? If you have any questions, let me know on the school website, and I will see you in class.